Welcome to Cross TV. Mama Lola here. I don't know about you, but it's hot where we're at. So if you're in cooler weather, just take advantage of it. I think we're at a 108 here in California. Whew. So how are you this week? Is it settling in that we have not been here before? Because I think for the first few months, we kind of thought, well, possibly we would go back to somewhat what seems familiar and normal. But what it looks like is we're moving forward into something that doesn't really compute in our brains that we've been here. And so it's really taking us aback. And we have to remember to not look at the news and secular things too much, to really focus on the Word of God and to keep Him ever present with you because if you don't, you will get discouraged very easily. And that's what the enemy wants, beloved. He wants us to lose our call of destiny. He wants us to walk in fear. He wants us to just wonder about the future to a way and a place that seems dark and maybe overwhelming and kind of hopeless. And so, especially personalities that are creatures of habit, you know, that we like to do things a certain way and we may have our lists and we may have a plan to enforce what we're about to do. And so this kind of puts people in limbo as to what to do next. But it doesn't put God in that position to where he's wondering. He's been speaking for the last three years. I'm going to do a new thing. I'm pouring in new oil. I'm hitting you with fresh wind and fresh fire. And I don't think in our brains it computes what that really means. But in our spirit, there's an excitement that something has shifted and we're moving into something that is going to be fantastic. I know the news says everything quant contrary to what the Lord is doing right now, but I want you to be encouraged today. I want you to stand upon the word of God. You know, decades ago, I based the very foundation of my ministry, Refiner's Fire, on the scripture of Isaiah 61. And basically, it says what our purpose is here, that we've been touched to heal the brokenhearted, to give hope to the lost, to raise up those that don't even have a voice. You may be in a country today where you can't speak about Jesus openly. You can't even have a desire to move in that area to even test it out. But no one can take away your spirit. No one can quiet God from speaking to you if you are earnestly hungry. Rise up. And if you're suffering right now, I have an answer. And that answer is go and help someone else in their troubles. Give something away that you may even need to help someone else. Sacrifice something that the Lord will receive as a sweet offering unto him that will make somebody else's life worthwhile. You know, I had my three oldest children at a very young age, and I remember not having things for them, and I remember crying with them because they didn't have formula, and they didn't have at the time, diapers, and there wasn't food, and there wasn't anything in our cupboards or in the refrigerator. And nowadays, things are really quite different. Um, even here in the United States of America, there, there are blessings that people are, have food banks, and they have accesses to churches, and, and people seem to be even more compassionate to that. But back when I was a child having children, 
it wasn't there. You were almost looked on as someone who was less than and that because you didn't make wise choices, you were you needed with hard knocks and hard love to walk out some hard consequences. But what that did is it allowed children to suffer as well. And God is never in that mindset where he ever wants a child to suffer. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know what you're going through. I just know what I've been through. And from that place of pain and abandonment and rejection and hurt, God has raised me up to become a mighty woman of God that can speak the truth, that can lead many through dire places that seem hopeless. Are you hopeless today? Do you not know or understand how you're going to feed your children or your family or if you have a job left? Beloved, there are so many people that are hurting right now. There are so many people with questions in their mind. They don't know what to do, but our God does. And I can lead you to the one that supernaturally can loose opportunities over you that you would never otherwise experience. You see, the supernatural right now is going to become natural to the believer. And even to a lot of unbelievers, they are going to experience God's touch of love. God's heart was never just to give to one and neglect another or because somebody was born in a country of privilege and somebody else wasn't, does he see them differently? No, he absolutely does not. In fact, God has a heart of empathy. He has a heart that hurts when his people hurt. You know, today, God's going to lose some supernatural things over your life. I don't know about you, but... God has told me to do things over the years, and I still think back on how he's multiplied money, how he had money show up when I didn't have any, how he asked me to give away our Thanksgiving dinner, and my children were upset, and they were saying, why do we have to give away our food? And I said, because God said. And we came home, and there were two turkeys on my porch when I couldn't pay my rent. God said, go to the closet where the bills were and open this envelope, and there was my rent money. You know, when God told me to write a check when there wasn't money in the bank, you've, some of you who know me have heard these things before, but I'm here to tell you that's nothing compared to what God's up to. You know, he loves encouraging us with the supernatural. The, what was all intended for mankind was that the supernatural would be natural to man. And we lost that through Adam and Eve. We lost that. And God wants to restore that upon planet Earth. And if we listen and humble ourselves and repent and turn from our sin, I mean genuinely. That means not just one more time or I'll do it when it's convenient, or I'll do it when my mate does it, or my spouse does it, or my children are obedient, or when I have enough. Mm -mm. God says, if you will turn from doing those things now, and you would humble yourself, that means you don't have that prideful spirit that's going to blame God and blame people and blame your mama. You know, mamas get blamed for everything. And so he's saying, if you'll do that, just that, just allow your pride to go and your pain to go and, and your rejection and abandonment and your stiff-necked ability just to keep unforgiveness in your heart, if you will humble yourself, if you will say, God, I tried it this way, I can't do it. I can't function without you. And you truly turn from your sin. And you begin to pray. And this is for the leaders of nations. This is keys to the kingdom for just a time as this. If we will do this, God will restore the land. He's going to restore 
I believe the United States of America supernaturally, and it is going to spill over into the other nations. God never intended for one nation to have so much and another one to have nothing or to have the leadership in other countries take what belongs to the people and l allow them to have a lifestyle that's not conducive with the people that live within that land. I don't know where you're at today, but I stand here today telling you the Lord is up to something great. You know, I believe people are going to have supernatural encounters with Jesus himself. I think during this season there are going to be visitations. I think there are going to be visions and there are going to be signs and wonders and things that your skin is literally going to bear witness when the angels flood into your household and begin to do a work that you can't do in your, your human mind. But supernaturally, he's going to say, why are you worried about food? Why are you worried about tomorrow? Why are you worried about disease? Why are you worried about your family? Haven't I said that they're marked for the kingdom of God if you stand? Haven't I said, though a thousand fall at your right hand and 10,000 at your side, that no virus will come near your dwelling? Haven't I said, I have you tomorrow's in the palm of my hand? Haven't you heard my word that I'm excited about what I'm doing on planet Earth? Don't you know what I've created for you, what I'm doing? I have things for you to seek out as kings, as ministers, as prophets, as preachers, teachers, evangelists, apostles. I have these things for you. I'm wiping away the names. I'm bringing people to a parallel place of importance, even with themselves. Not that you don't reverence those in leadership, but he's doing something so comparable in the move of the living God that not one person is going to be able to say, oh, I move in this gift and I move in that gift. For in every season, in every situation, we are going to be equipped because we're going to open our mouth and God's going to fill it. Oh my goodness, aren't you excited? I know you are. I know you are right now because God has put eternity in our hearts. If we can't believe for the very best, if we love this Yeshua the way that we do, and he's going to do all of these things, we should be dancing in the midst of this, what seems like, this pandemic, which seems like a famine. God is going to bless in the midst of this place. The other day I was talking to God and I said, Lord, so many people are hurting and they're losing hope. And, you know, he didn't even let me focus on that. You know what he said? He said, daughter, can I love you just a little bit more today? I said, what, Lord? can I just love you a little bit more? And I said, oh, Lord. And I was overtaken by his love that only a daddy could give. And I felt his presence, and I felt like he invaded where I was at. And all of those things that I was worried about, that I was concerned about, just seemed to diminish in his presence. And I just got this sense like, I'm loving you a little bit more. I'm pouring you into you a little bit more, that you can love and give out a little bit more. Don't you know that's my heart? I just want to love you a little bit more. That's what Jesus wants to do with you today. He just wants to love you a little bit more. Will you let him just love you? And it may take a step of faith. It may take a step of just believing that this God that you can't see is really there and could he possibly love me and could he possibly care and does he have an answer for my way out? And while I was in that place, the Lord began to speak this to me. Years ago, I heard an, a message by 
um, Tiz and Larry Hutch. And it was so amazing. They said the seven places that God had shed blood before he got to the cross. And the Lord says, I, I want you to study that again. And so I'm still on number one. <laughs> and so God took me back and I could almost feel what the Lord was feeling in that garden. And the Lord separated himself. You know, all, every time he was in for a great move of God, going to minister to the multitudes, go through something that seemed horrendous, Jesus would go off and he would just pray. And if Jesus needed to do that, we need to do that. But he goes to the garden of Gethsemane and he's, he's there and he's anguishing over this cup that he knows he's going to have to walk out. I don't know about you, but if I had to think about leaving my family and leaving my life and leaving those that seemed important to me and, and I had to be sacrificed and crucified upon a cross, they they used crucifixion because it was one of the most painful deaths you could ever suffer. And so Jesus knows that he's moving in that direction. And he goes and he prays. And, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but he said, Daddy, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. It's going to hurt. And I'm going to leave everyone here and... And, and I'm going to be alone. I don't want to do this. And I believe at that very moment, the Lord showed him your, your face and my face. And Jesus had this moment of realizing if he doesn't go, then we would have to die that horrible death because we're separated through sin, and there would be no place of reconciliation or restoration without the lamb, the lamb, the blameless, sinless lamb of God who was Yeshua, Jesus, going to that cross of sacrifice. And he all of a sudden says, not my will, Dad, but your will be done. And he was in such physical anguish, the word says, that he laid his head down and he began to, you just know you're thinking about what's going to happen next because we're human. He was 100% moving in that place of being a human being. And he was all of a sudden in such anguish and pain the capillaries in his head burst. Scientifically, they say when you get to that place, it's like blood vessels and capillaries begin to burst and you begin to sweat blood. And the Lord said this. He said, daughter, that was the first blood. And he said, because my mind was in such anguish, my people can go back to that garden and claim that healing of that blood covering over their mind because I've already paid the price for that even before I got to the cross. You see, the Lord's outside of time and that blood sacrifice began then. And so if today you are suffering from schizophrenia, bipolar, demonic attacks, demonic chatter, voodoo, curses, vexes, hexes, worry, fear, anxiety, panic attacks, and they're overwhelming you right now, right now, the Lord's going to loose that fresh oil over your mind 
And I want you to see the Lord taking that thing off of your mind as if it were a big steel plate around your head. And as I begin to pray, Lord, loose their minds and bring Holy Ghost clarity to them, God, remove that bondage. Remove it. And those angels are waiting there with nets to collect those things and to collect those demons who've oppressed you and come against you and tormented you. And maybe you didn't even know they were there because generationally they were passed down to you. A lie of the enemy is your parents had it. Now you have to walk in this. It's hereditary. Nothing can come against that. Today, Jesus breaks that chain of authority that the enemy has had, and we bind it and rebuke it, and we speak clarity and freedom over your minds today. For the battlefield truly is in the mind. It begins with the thought. And Jesus thought a thought and out of his mouth came the word, and things, things were established and created through that word. And so today, I want you to say, yes, I'm free. I want you to declare your freedom. Well, maybe I'm free. Well, someday. No, today is the day of your deliverance, beloved. Maybe you're suffering with headaches. Maybe you have migraines. Maybe you don't even understand what you feel, but you always feel this place of worry and anxiety. God's getting rid of that right now as we speak. You're going to feel God pour over your head that anointing oil that balm of Gilead that breaks every chain of bondage and he's setting your mind free. And what's going to happen when your mind's free, your body will follow. You see, your mind sets the precedence for where you go in your body. What your mind says is who you will obey. What you are entertaining, what you are saying to yourself eventually will come into being. Not because you have that power to do that, but because God has given us that power, as a man thinketh, so is he. And it's a natural response of cause and effect. And so today, I want you to take that freedom. Headaches are leaving. Anxiety is leaving. Being abandoned and rejection is leaving those voices that are demonic and are always telling you something negative that spirit of death and fear maybe even hurting someone else is leaving today those demons have absolutely no authority are you sensing it because god is loosing it wherever you are today around the world and he is coming against those things that have come against you Will you ask Jesus to come into your heart today? Will you ask him, say, Lord, I can feel that you've done this thing for my mind. I understand that the first place of bloodshed was in that garden, and you did that with the excruciating pain of capillaries and blood vessels bursting through that anguish. And today I claim my healing by speaking forth the word that says, today I am free. And where your mind has been set free, now your body will follow. Your spirit will lord over your body. Today is a day of freedom. Today is a day of reconciliation with your God. Today is a day to get excited because the supernatural is getting ready to be a thing of the natural. How do you feel about that? You know, it's easy for people to believe in ghosts and spirits and, and, and they have a problem believing in God. Well, guess what? God is a spirit. And we have a spirit living within us who have received Jesus today. But I want you, if you don't know this King Jesus, the one who suffered and died for mankind, for you. I want you just today to say, 
Jesus, if you're real, will you show me? I would like to experience signs and wonders and miracles. I would love to have a visitation from you, King Jesus. I would love to know that you hear my prayers and you care about me. And the minute I ask you in my heart, you have marked my family for the kingdom of God. I would love to believe that one day all tears and pain and disease and wickedness and hopelessness will be gone and we will be able to live in the most beautiful place of creation and live forever without ever growing old or dying. I would love to believe that that's not a fairy tale, but it's a reality for those that believe. I want you to show up, King Jesus and Holy Spirit, Father God, in my dreams. I give you permission to intervene today in my situation that seems so hard and hopeless. Addictions are coming off right now. Addictions are coming off. God is crushing it under his foot. He said, no more. And if you even try to go back, there will be no pleasure there. God is getting ready to restore and renew. He's restoring hearing today. Hearing in the physical sense where you will hear it in the natural. So today, beloved, I just want to welcome you into the family of God. I want you to know and sense his presence. You don't have to wait to visit here again. Will you come and just say, Jesus, touch me? And he just wants you to hear this. Will you let me love you just a little bit more today? Mama Lola signing out. Until next week, let the Lord love you just a little bit more. Bye-bye.